Good morning everyone and welcome back to So What If I Sew. Well, welcome if you're new. My name's Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today you join me for some peak weekend pyjama sewing. I am fully in my pyjamas. I have been out of bed for about a minute or so. <laughs> um, because I just wanted to get some sewing done. I feel like at the moment I am kind of preparing to get sewing and then I get distracted by things. So I've decided to do my very traditional just get up and sew. Um, I've taken my meds and that's about it, so I have tea. Um, so anyway, today you join me for a sew along I've wanted to do for ages, similar to the cashmere at Rose Club dress. When I saw this pattern come out, I was like, I really, really want to make it. I think I'm gonna make quite a few. I will be honest, I'll be quite sad if it doesn't suit me. I really hope it does. Um, I am of course talking about the Friday pattern company Davenport dress, which is on screen now. So the Devonport is a nice day dress, it's quite loose, it's got a drawstring finish at the centre but it's got lots of lovely little details, it's, it's got a little sleeve frill, it's got you know like a nice kind of, I, did, I thought it was gathered but it's not a little elastic neckline, it's got gathered and elastic sleeves, it's going to be really cute and I'm very excited, Mabel here is going to help me out um, in terms of hemming and fitting which will be really good um, but I'm not going to worry too much because it is a loose garment. Now I got the pattern printed in A0 from the Pattern Printing Girl but I'm having trouble deciding my size because it's a very loose pattern. Like really, really loose. So I think like the small, I'll need to check this in a second, but I think the small is like a 35 or 34 bust but it's actually a 41.5 or something like that in finished garment measurements. So I'm struggling here, do I pick it based on my waist measurement, which would mean I would do a small, or do I pick it based on my bust measurement, which would mean I'd do a medium, but the rest of it will be massive. So I think, I know it sounds silly, but I actually I think I'm going to go for the small, because there will definitely be a, enough bust room, considering I have a very small back as well. Um, because I just don't want it to, I don't want it to drown me. I don't want there to be loads of excess fabric. Um, it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah, like if the medium was, if there was very little ease in the pattern, the medium would be perfect. But it comes up as like forty odd inches all the way around, pretty much, and then with the drawstring. So, oh, it's quite hard. But I think, I think I'm gonna make small. Um, I've also looked up quite a few people's uh, reviews of the pattern including Made by Cathcraft, who is on YouTube as well, I've tagged her. Um, her written review I found really helpful, because uh, she said she was between the small and the extra small, and she went with the extra small and definitely didn't regret it. So I think I'm gonna go with the small, on the basis that, like, I, yeah, I just don't think there's enough of me for the medium to look nice. Um, and I can always let out the seams a little bit if there's a bust issue, but I think, I think it'll be fine. So, I'm going to do the small, I've made that decision on camera, woo! Um, now, in terms of fabric, this video is a collaboration with Lush Cloth. So, if you've not heard of Lush Cloth, they are a wonderful business, owned by Oyin. Um, I was interviewed on her So Let's Talk Instagram series last week, which is very exciting, and she has gifted me this fabric to make this pattern. Now, originally this summer I was on a fabric ban. I still technically am, actually, because I've been sent fabric to work with and I've not bought any for quite a while, um, except for a pattern test, which you have to do. Um, and she said to me, let me know if you want to do anything because fabric bans can be a bit, you know, prohibitive, so if you want to make anything summary, let me know. And I suddenly thought to myself, I really want to make the Davenport, like, otherwise I'm going to have to basically wait a year or make lots of wintry ones, and I fancy, like, one seasonally transitional one. So I'm using this fabulous cotton poplin. It's a lovely sage green, I don't know if that's showing up well on the camera, and it's got little white flowers all over it so I'll hold that there for a second. Uh, it's lovely and crisp and light. It's a little bit see-through against the light so you can kind of see form through it, although this way around is actually okay. Um, so I'm not worried, I'm not gonna line it, I think it'll be absolutely fine, especially with gathering in like body to the skirt and everything, it'll be fine. So I'm very, very excited to use this. I've got two and a half meters as the pattern asks. Um, and I don't have very much elastic, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, because I, I've got into a really bad habit, right, of checking the fabric allowances and not checking what notions I need for things. So 
like I've got elastic I've definitely got there's another piece somewhere I've definitely got enough for the neckline um and there I may have to shear the sleeves instead or they'll be mismatched elastic but we will see I want to use up tail ends of things so I you know I'm not fussed as long as it fits comfortably on my on my wrist then I don't care what it looks like on the inside if they're different colours it's not a problem I'm also this is the first thing I'm going to be sewing on my new ambassador machine so I have put some green thread in it um it's not sage green it's not exact match but again I'm not that bothered and if, if I have to do any top stitching I'll just use it as an accent um but this machine I'm very excited to work with it's got a standard 90 weight needle in it at the moment and we are going to get sewing so step one as always we've got to cut out our pattern and cut out our fabric so let's go and do that fabric has been cut out and now I am settling down to my first few stitches on my new machine. Uh, so step one is rather lovely in that we just have to make our drawstring. So we've got two long thin pieces which are here. So we're going to sew these closed at one end and then fold one edge down, fold it up to meet that and close it off and then we will have our drawstring and that can then be just popped out the way until later on. So let's do that quickly. drawstring is made um I misread the instructions earlier you make this like you make a normal drawstring so sewn together at the back and pulled through which took a very long time because this is a very long drawstring um one thing I have to say about my lovely new machine is it has a quarter inch uh, marker for a seam allowance on the actual foot plate which is lovely because it's actually under the foot so it's over like where if I try and show you it's, it's on the glass plate here so that you can see it and feed it in under the foot which I just think is fabulous because this actually comes up a lot and previously I've just kind of done it by the edge of the foot but it's so useful to actually have a marker so big fan of that we have got a front neckline facing here uh, which I was meant to cut one of and I've cut two off by accident so I've got a spare one um, and we have our front bodice here so uh, first of all it wants us to finish this edge I'm actually going to do that in a second and get my overlocker together and finish lots of things um, so I'm going to leave that until a little bit later on and then with right sides together we're going to attach this to the front of the curve and then basically right sides together clip it press it press it through to the wrong side 
and that would be a nice clean neckline there. Basically the way this works is we have an elasticated neckline so this is basically although it's a facing it's basically also an elastic casing so it's going to go on and then we stitch it down so yeah we end up with a channel it'll pull together and then we'll get a nice little gathered neckline. I have stitched down my facing <coughs> excuse me um, I've stitched down my facing and then I fed my elastic through my elastic is a little wider than the channel but I don't actually think it matters because we've very gently and very painstakingly fed it through so there we are it will sit beautifully like that So our next stage is to base down the elastic and then we're going to attach our front yoke pieces. Um, I've just realised, I think I only cut two and I was meant to cut four, so I may have to very quickly go and cut another set. Um, I can't remember, I need to check what I've done. And then we basically sandwich it. Um, so once this is down, clip off the excess. There's a yoke either side on each ear, so yeah, it must be four. Um, and we're going to stitch those down as well on the neckline, so they go like this way but it'll be much easier when I can show you so let me quickly see if I have the right number of those and then I'll stitch one side show you guys and then do the other because right now my brain feels a little bit like I think I know what I'm doing but also I don't so <laughs> I will have a go and then show you guys what I have learned <laughs> Right, so um, this is actually not difficult at all, wonderful. So what we do is, it would help if I had the two other pieces of the yoke next to me. I did have to cut four, so just if, if you're on the same boat with me and only cut two, you do need four. And what you basically do is, now it's time for our back yoke and I had a wee look at this because I, again like I just think my brain is like off today I'm loving this pattern but I think yeah just yokes and stuff I can get a bit confused and I've only cut one yoke I'm an idiot why do I always do this with yokes genuinely I always have to go back and cut another one so I'm gonna have to go do that now but basically what we're gonna do is cut uh, another one stitch them together at the neckline so we get the curve right clip that obviously it's the back neckline but um stitch, stitch it together clip it keep it this way around and then stitch the shoulders together around the top of the bodice we've already done so we'll sandwich the front bodice between each piece stitch it together at the shoulders so that when you turn it through you'll get the nice um what's it called you'll get the nice like a uh, clean all the seams hidden inside look which is what we want from a yoke so yet again i'm going to um, cut another one honestly i don't know what it is it's like my brain refuses to recognize that i need to cut two even though i read it i was like yeah cut two on the board that's fine and i just didn't do it <laughs> so i'm gonna go do that again oh my head hurts today i just i'm not in the right frame of mind to read instructions but i'm loving sewing today like the more I sew, the more comfortable I'm getting and like the more I feel my brain relaxing. But I do feel right now like I'm like, oh my god, instructions, what? <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it'll look good. here 
are after a lovely Sunday lunch, which Adam cooked, to do the back of our bodice. So, here we are. It's so useful being able to actually show you guys this one here. So, what we've done is we've done the front yoke and the back yoke is still separate. The front yoke is closed. So the first step is to take our lovely back piece and we're going to sew, wrong way up, apologies. Uh, we're going to sew two lines of gathering stitches between this notch and this notch so that the piece that is currently this size fits the back of the back. So we're going to put that together and then we will sew this the way you would normally sew a, um, like with the burrito method, I believe. So we'll roll this up inside and then basically sandwich this between the other sides. But I'll show you a little bit more when we get there. If you've never done the burrito method, it's really cool and it always feels like you're doing it wrong until you suddenly put it through and it's magic. So let's gather up the back. I'll show you how I'm going to fit that and then we'll do the burrito method. I'll try and do it on camera. Um, this video might be a long one, sorry guys, uh, but hopefully it is useful. So, let's get some gathering stitches done. neatest in the world but you can see basically I've rolled the back up and the front up and this has three layers of fabric trapped in it so it's back yoke back piece with the gathering back yoke again and it's only those three layers I'll be sewing through everything else is folded down into the middle so let's do that quickly um it has to be said yeah this machine is an absolute dream so my other machine struggles a little bit and it didn't originally but just now with um long stitches and i do gathering and it often gets like something something strange happens i don't know what but something very odd happens and it basically doesn't doesn't like doing a long stitch length whereas this machine is obviously loving life and being fantastic so there we go let's knock my speed up a bit this machine can do up to 1,300 stitches per minute, I believe, which is quite a lot. And the thing is, I'm quite a speedy sewer, and but I like the fact that the slow speed is really slow. It's a lot easier to control. So this is about, this is nearly at full. It's about just over halfway in terms of the old speed gauge. Adam's grandma and I were talking about this when she, she sews a lot. Um, I wish you could see a mileage counter on a sewing machine to see how far you've sewn because I bet it is miles and miles. So let's put it through. Hopefully this works. I hope it works. Otherwise I'm going to look very silly. I'll just edit it out. Um, no, I don't often do that actually. I do normally show you guys all my mistakes. Haha, -ha, there we go. Lovely. My yoke is in got some threads to snip out the back and I've left it quite a puffy gather but I don't mind that actually I quite like it so let's pop that on Mabel so you can see a bit better and let's move over there we go so the back is on my dress fabulous so the next is the sleeve flutters but I am contemplating quickly getting it actually no I don't need to because all my seams are um, enclosed that's actually fine. So the next step is the sleeve flutters. Now before we stitch our flutters in, the piece looks like this, um, we need to finish the edges. So, sorry I didn't realise that was pinned down, one second there we go. So that's what the flutter piece looks like and you end up with two of these. So it's quite a big flutter and we're going to finish off this long edge here. Now it wants me to do a quarter inch and then a quarter inch turnover. I might just do a rolled hem with my rolled hem foot, but uh, we'll see. I might, I can see, you can see where it's meant to turn up to because there's like a little squared off edge. So it's meant to be basically that length rather than 
that long but also yeah I don't know so I I might just do a rolled hem it might be easier but I've got a quarter inch marking so I'm actually going to stitch along a quarter of an inch fold it fold it again and that'll actually give me a really good measurement of it I've still not set my iron up so I'm going to batch press things at the end I know I don't have a big enough sewing space to have an iron set up at the same time that's one thing I do miss about sewing in the living room but wherever we next live, hopefully we can have a slightly more boxy sewing room. Um, sorry, office, that is half a sewing room. <laughs> and then we can, I can have a full size ironing board because that's the one thing I'm really missing here. And I really need one. So anyway, let's finish these off. <laughs> able to pin into a mannequin so much uh, when I first learned to sew with my mum this is you know my mum has a mannequin um, and it's a proper canvas one and it just makes sewing so much easier so there we go bust is on my little puff shoulders back seems to be sitting a little low but that's okay so there we are now the next step before I start uh, tidy up the sewing room and get ready for work tomorrow morning I'm gonna leave my machine out so I can do a bit more before work but the last step for tonight is to pop on my sleeves so they're full length sleeves uh, but they'll have um, a gather at the end of them so I've popped on my little um, my little frills are very very easy to put on you literally just gather them and then fit them onto the line and stitch it across the way and then just flip it through so you know literally like two seconds they took to do um so our sleeves step one we've got to gather the sleeve head so very similar to this we'll just notch to notch two lines gather stitch and basically gather it until it's the same size as your sleeve head then we're going to put our sleeves in flat and we're going to do that by sandwiching the sleeve. So normally I would put a sleeve in like this. Then I've put this in, so I'm going to put it on top. And then stitch all the way basically over this stitching again with the sleeve in place. But this time all the way out to the armhole. And I'll do that on the other side as well. And then I think I'm going to take a break for tonight. Uh, because you can't see it's behind the camera but the floor is an absolute wreck and Adam and I both need to work in here tomorrow so I'm gonna have a moment to tidy I've got a Disney film on it's very chill so anyway let's grab a sleeve head pop that in not uh, yeah whole sleeve get the sleeve head chuck it in and then we'll pull it Morning. So this morning before work, we're going to quickly finish off our sleeves. Turn you round. Here we go. Our sleeves are open. So what we need to do is uh, there's a notch on this side that's quite hard to show, but we're going to fold up the edge by. It's easy for me to show this with the sleeve open. First of all, we're going to close up the side seams on the sleeves. Then we're going to fold this up a quarter of an inch, and then all the way up to the notch. So we'll end up with basically like a bar like that. And then 
we are going to sew that down and then insert some elastic. So we're going to end up with a nice little sort of frilled edge and an elastic on the sleeve, which is why the sleeves also look so long. So that's the aim. We're just going to finish our sleeves and then after work, we will do pockets, skirt, ruffles, drawstring, basically. I finished work and now we are back at the sewing table so um we this morning let me grab my dress off Mabel there we go we're gonna be looking at the skirt tonight but here is the top of my dress so all I've got left to do is put some elastic in the cuffs I don't have any more 1cm elastic I thought I did I don't so I've only got this very very thin elastic everything else is like two inches um I think that'll be okay even if it's just I'll put some of this in now and then order some elastic when I've got other haberdashery and then replace it it's not a huge issue but yeah so I'm going to pop some of this in it's nice and stretchy and it won't cut off the circulation of my wrist or anything which is perfect it'll just sort of keep it there so if I do it slightly um so where we go like about yeah that sort of tightness where it's like on my wrist it's not going to move unless I push it but it will be comfortable at least and then yeah i can swap it out so after that the job is we start on the pockets so uh there are really decent sized pockets you make them the way you would normally make pockets it's not especially complicated um, but i will show you again i'll do one talk you guys through it then do the other one and we'll be on to the skirt and honestly i think with a following wind, I can finish this tonight. And Adam is doing dinner, so I actually do have a whole evening to sew. So, let's pop some elastic in these, then it's pocket time. So, we're halfway through the pocket process and this is what it looks like. So. Um, first thing to be aware of is that the Davenport skirt, at the front, it has this, um, it's not an inseam pocket, it's like one of those, I forget, they have a proper name, but the outer seam will be, um, sorry, the back piece will be here, and the back pocket facing will come to here, so it will, I forget, but, uh, you know, it's not an inseam pocket, but it's sort of like a, a, a lipped pocket, which is quite cute, so that'll be there, and then we'll have a nice big side pocket. Pocket's really good size actually. So next step is we do the same on the back piece with the back pockets and then we will stitch them together and pull them through. Um, I'm going to quickly understitch these. I can't remember if it says in the instructions or not so I'm just, I mean they need understitching so I'm going to understitch these. Um, do the same on the back, sew it up and then show you guys my lovely pocketed skirt. I misread the instructions yay um, so I need to unpick the back pockets because what you actually do is I've done the front pockets right so let's get them there we go front pockets what I now need to do is stitch the back pockets around the curve onto the front pockets 
fold them back and then attach this skirt at the back so across the top I just had a bit of a moment there I don't know why I just just had a moment so let's do some unpicking I'm gonna unpick these I'm gutted as well because the top stitching on that is beautiful but it is what it is um and I really should have been less uh yeah now I think of it I have no idea why I did this because yeah no sorry <laughs> Tipsy moment. okay right so I'm gonna unpick these have another go and then show you them done correctly but I thought it was important I'm not gonna edit this out it is really important that you guys know that I do make mistakes um often after when I'm sewing after work or first thing in the morning when I'm having a great time very relaxingly sewing but I may not be in my most concentrated I think that would be fair to say so let's get the old quick unpick out keep the Netflix on and we will revisit these pockets when done correctly. Here we are after dinner and I have a skirt that makes sense. So again, lightly pinned onto the mannequin. That pin is there. Sorry, I've got one pin that's still in the skirt and one that's on the mannequin. Right. So what you do is you sew them around the clipped edge as discussed, then you fold it back on itself and there we go, I've got a nice pocket. And I will remember by the end of this video what this type of pocket is called. For some reason it is just gone. So here we are, lovely, we have two pockets. Now we're going to pop the back of the skirt on the front, stitch down the side seams, make sure we enclose uh, the pocket edges. And then we will have a skirt. I think regardless of what the instructions say, I'm gonna do the ruffle next just so it's done. And then we'll do the drawstring last because yeah, I can't, the, ru the ruffle doesn't need to go anywhere else. So yeah, I think if we get that on there and I actually, I was worried the ruffle might be too long on me, but if I stand back enough, that's actually very, very short. So that'll be fine. And the pocket, yeah, look how big that pocket is. It's fabulous. Look, huge thing. This is going to be such a good work dress. I can already feel it. So let's pop the back skirt on the front stick them together then we'll have a skirt we'll do our ruffle I'm gonna hem the ruffle first and then gather it and attach it and then we'll be on to the drawstring so we are actually basically done like the last three years hemming this and sewing the gathering stitches because it is very very long um and i'm now going to gather this up and then we'll quickly move back to the main dress and do the drawstring uh casing i should say drawstring casing and then attach the bodice to the skirt and then it's just this onto the skirt which i might do in the morning to be honest and then i should be able to wear this to work tomorrow which is very exciting so <sighs> time for some never ending gathering. I hate gathering. I don't, well actually no, I don't mind short amounts of gathering, but I hate just being sat here with something enormous and just having to just stay doing this for what feels like months. <laughs> so I'll do this before bed and then in the morning, um, I'll do this, sorry, and then I'll do the drawstring casing. And then in the morning I will attach this to the rest of the dress and we'll be done. 
So I am going to pop something on Netflix because... How do you guys gather? Do you focus? I don't. Um, I do at the end, like when it's kind of all short and I have to space it out. That's fine. But it's that sort of endless just sliding. Like it's going to be so long before my gathers get down here from starting up here. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> we'll get there. It's one of those things about sewing that there are always going to be little jobs that are irritating. But to be honest, from what I've seen so far of the Davenport, it's worth it. So, by the way, I do this because otherwise the thread hurts my hand. So I'll wrap it around like a pen or a highlighter or something with a decent sized body. And that does tend to really help because it stops my hands hurting. I find the thread really cuts into my skin. So we'll just sit and gather this. There we go. This is, yeah, this way really works for me. And then, yeah, we will we will move on. So I'm going to time lapse me gathering. Not that it's immensely interesting, but it's worth seeing that, you know, that we do it. And then I will show you tomorrow when I do attach this. Because I do now need to move on to the drawstring casing. Um, uh, but tomorrow when I do this and attach it to the bodice. Um, not the bodice, the upper skirt. Then I will show you. Sorry, you've really got tired me tonight. So I'm really enjoying this. It's so relaxing to sit and sew. But in terms of filming, my brain is just gone. So I am sorry if this isn't the clearest sew along in the world. It's definitely not a tutorial. This is a sew along we are learning together. I want to quickly pop my drawstring casing on this skirt because while I've done the ruffles and they're just over there, I think it's gonna be easier just with less volume at the moment. So what we have to do is it's actually quite simple. So step one is that we grab the two fronts of the drawstring casing, which are here. Um, and what we do is this end is the one that goes to the waist, the flat end here. We're gonna press it under by a quarter of an inch, yeah, a um, quarter of an inch at each side to create a nice clean edge. We're gonna edge stitch that down and then we attach the waist edge of the drawstring either side to our nice long back piece. This one's cut in a fold. And then we have our whole drawstring and then we'll meet back here. Cause if I try and explain it all in a one, I'm gonna get confused again. But it is actually okay, it's not too bad. So on we go. under the lower edge by a quarter of an inch what I have actually done is because I always find when I'm pressing a quarter inch I always burn my fingers or like it's really difficult so what I did is again I've just sewed along at that distance and I've finger pressed it with my nails which works really well actually on cotton and then I've pressed it on top but just by like going through it because I've got a decent size nail at the moment so I found that's been really good so I've done that so we're gonna sew the unfolded side to the bottom of the skirt, uh, sorry, to the top of the skirt now, so right sides together, and then we can reconvene. Okay, I just, yeah, my brain is not in it today, because yet again, I read the instructions. Well, I read the instructions wrong, but also I would say that at the point of doing the waistband, it's super detailed instructions, and then there's one step about attaching the waistband, where it just doesn't say what side of the fabric should be to what, which I was a bit like, I was like, okay, right, yeah, up to date, fab. And then I got to that step and I was like, oh, it must mean right sides together, but it doesn't. What it actually means is, so you fold up the lower edge of your waistband like so, and you're meant to just press it because you actually go wrong side to right side put it on like this so I don't know if you can see that properly you put it on and then we're going to edge stitch this down create the channel 
and then we put the bodice in and that will become a channel like like that so we're actually securing this bottom edge now but that is not clear because it literally just says in the instructions attach drawstring casing to the waistband with the lower like with the notched edge up which I could do either way around and very nearly did thankfully there's no one picking because I looked at it and just went hang on how will that work so we're here but yeah just just for your information the drawstring casing goes right side up on the right side of the fabric so that's wrong side of the drawstring casing to right side of the dress. Um, I'll stand up. So I think the first thing I want to say is this is the small and it's still really quite big on me. So personally I'm going to make the extra small next time. It's also drafted for somebody who's 5'6". So I think the body's quite long. Like the bust works because my bust lifts it to my natural waist but the rest of it is just quite long on my body. So let me show you kind of in, in full length. Right so you won't be able to see my head but that's fine. So I'm going to do up the drawstring. Actually, no, before I do, this is, so this is, if I can unknot the drawstring, this is the small, right? And I have, for reference, a 36 inch bust, 27 hip, 27 waist. So my bust ends here, so there's a good amount left under the arm. I'm going to have to take that out, actually, just so that it fits me. Um, then also my waist is in here. So there's a lot of, um, what's the word, positive ease on this garment. And then it's, it's very long. So I did this with a 1.5 centimetre because I knew it was going to be too long. But even then I might have to hem it a bit more just because it's, it, I feel a bit drowned. So if I do up the drawstring... So that is actually how tight I need it. So the pockets are great, the pockets are really good. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the little fins on the shoulders, I think they're a bit big for me. Again, so I might like hem them another, I could get away with another centimetre within the lines of the dress. I think I'm going to take some fullness out of the sleeves, it's just a bit big all over. But it is, it's very comfortable, I don't know if it's quite quite my style but I also really like it and I can see it being really comfortable in the summer. I don't know if it's something I'd wear with tights and boots in the winter because it feels a bit big and statementy for that but I might. Um, I think the first job for me really is to kind of look at how much I could take out of because there's just a bit too much volume everywhere and I feel a bit puffy. So I think I'm going to look at I'll lose a tiny bit of pocket, but that's not the end of the world. Of just pulling in those side seams a little, maybe by about that much. Same all the way up, really, because I've got a lot of excess fabric under the elbow, and um, not under the elbow, under the armpit. Although actually, it's a nice amount of bust room, so I might leave the bodice alone and take a little bit of fullness out of the sleeve as well. But I do, I do like it. These are things I'll probably do next time. I don't know if I'll do it to this one. But it is, it is a comfortable dress. I think it's just, I'm five foot two. It's drafted for a five foot six person. So I, I think I feel a little bit drowned in it. So it's probably not my like, greatest success. It's not like when I put my LED on and I just fell in love with it. But it is, it's a nice dress and it's something I could work on as well because I do like it. I think there are elements that I would like to alter, like I think next time I wouldn't include the sleeve frill because I think that just makes me look too boxy, like I feel, I feel very very boxy right now. 
Um, and I'll never have the sleeves to full length, they'll always be up here. So whether I take the fullness out and in future make a three quarter length sleeve, there's that. I like the skirt though. I actually, like, obviously I would make a size down next time, but I do actually quite like it. It's um, kind of very floaty and lovely, but I just think I feel a bit, it feels a bit much with all the frills and everything on top. So I am happy I made this because I've wanted to try this pattern for ages. I am going to make it again, but I think I'm going to change a couple of things. So as I mentioned, I'm going to take some fullness out of here, some out of this size, probably just make a size smaller actually to start with. Um, but the other thing is I might make it in a viscose or something drapey because this cotton's very structured and I think I love this fabric. It is so comfortable, it's very breathable and like I love the colour the pattern. I think it hangs really well with this. But I'm wondering if it's got too much structure so it's making the dress sort of stand out for my body too much. Um, so I wonder if I made it as something drapey, whether it would be a bit more fluid and... But it is, it's, this is the fabric that's suggested for this dress as well, so it's worth you guys seeing it. It's funny because Oyen and I actually discussed this on the So Let's Talk episode we did, where we said it's hard, you can't try on a garment you're sewing before you sew it, so you don't know if it's going to suit you or not. And I don't think this doesn't suit me, but I don't think it suits me as much as other things do. And I think the trick is with sewing is that, you know, knowing that that will be, that will be the case. I'm glad I made this. There's, there's no regret. I'm just a little sad that it doesn't suit me as well as I thought it might. Um, in terms of the size reference, the sizing chart showed me to be a medium. This is a small. I would like to make an extra small. There is a lot of positive ease in this garment. So definitely pick your size by looking at both sets you know, like by looking at the finished measurement chart and your actual size bracket because, yeah, I really should have gone for the extra small but I was worried I wouldn't have enough bust room. Uh, so I'm going to look at, you know, several things with this and I would like to make it again. But I'm just, yeah, I guess I'm a little sad that it doesn't suit me as well as I would have liked it to. I feel a little bit cottage cool for my own good. Uh, but, but it is very comfortable. And I can definitely see there being times in the summer where I just throw this on. But it's probably not, this version anyway, it's probably not gonna be the workhorse I wanted it to be. However, again, with the tried and tested pattern, it's, well, which I hope this would have become for me, I'll probably make it a couple of ways. I'll probably try various things on it. But, you know, it is, it is a lovely garment. I think the Davenport, I would recommend it, especially the instructions and the illustrations were really, really good. Um, I just don't know if this version is necessarily super me. Um, I would like to make it again, actually, and in a different fabric to see if it's just this cut doesn't necessarily suit my body type, or if it's just that I have a lot of structure and body in this fabric, but we'll, we'll see. It's just not my favourite make, and it's definitely like, I think it's gorgeous, but it is just a bit big everywhere. So I think I'm gonna take it off, well, I'll take some pictures, and then I'll take it off, and then have a look at how I could reduce bulk in certain areas now that it's already made. I'm gonna leave it a few days so I don't do anything that I regret, because that's also important. But I will document it as well on my Instagram and see where I get to with this because it's a lovely pattern. I think as well I would leave these off next time because I don't think they do anything for my figure at all. They don't do anything for my sort of shape. So I think if I had them off I think it would help. But also you almost need the accent because otherwise I've just got kind of a bust shelf. Uh, so maybe I just need it a bit smaller. Um, but yeah, so all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's great to be back with the sew along. I'm going to give you some options for the September sew along and I've got some fabulous collaborations. Thank you again to Oyen from Lush Cloth for gifting me this fabric and for supporting me to try this new pattern. It's really exciting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. It's definitely one of my ones that's got a bit more mistakes and you know human error in it but i hope that's useful to you guys and i hope you enjoy it so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time